test, 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 test. Good morning. Good morning. He is risen. Y'all remember when y'all were little, he arose. He arose. He arose from the dead. Why did he arise? Because he loves us like no other man can love me. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So we welcome you to Living Word Baptist Church where the Word of God comes alive. Our mission is to empower the community by exalting the Savior, equipping the saint, evangelizing the sinner, and enlightening hearts and minds to the glory of God. So today, today is Resurrection Sunday. We thank and we praise God that he hung, he bled, he died, but he rose again. Yes, God, we thank and praise God for that. So I want to say a special shout out and thank you to those that um, attended the Good Friday service. Wow, wow. They did an awesome and a magnanimous job. They had preachers from the new generation to the old generation. And they brought a word in their own way. And it was powerful, powerful. So thank you for those that came out. Seniors, seniors in the house, where y'all at? All right. So see Mother Audrez. Mother Audrez, raise your hand. Before April 1st, she has some tax prep and tax credit information for you. And so before April 1st, that's today, y'all. Y'all need to see her. <laughs> if, you, if you need that information, talk to Mother Audrez. Right. On Thursday, April the 4th at 7 p.m., the Reverend Dr. Reginald Fletcher will receive a Community Empowerment Award at Mount Olive <laughs> Baptist Church. 1003 West 16th Street. Y'all need to write that down because on, on April 1st, everybody texted. Now, where we going? Where we supposed to be? So I'm telling y'all, April 4th, 1003 West 16th Street. And so he's going to be receiving the Dudamus Empowerment Worship Award. Um, so let's support our pastor. Um, on Friday, April the 5th, home going service for mother Carlina James at Crown Hill, 10 a.m. viewing, 12 noon service. Please let Paula Bridgewater know how you can assist with food for the repast. Have you moved or changed your name? Remember to register to vote before April the 10th. You can go to lwbcindy.org and click on community resources, then click on register to vote. Women, all the women in the house, raise your hand. All the women in the house, raise your hand. We are getting ready for a women's retreat coming on April 12th and 13th at Calvary Baptist in Greenwood. Go to www.scbi.org to register. Um, Sunday, April the 14th at 10.30 a.m., plan to be present for our LWBC family discussion. Uh, Mark, oh, we're we going to talk. We're going to talk about it. So come with your questions, but come with a mindset to share and receive. Um, so bring Christ with y'all uh, to talk about it because he's in the midst of everything. So Sunday, um, oh no, mark your calendar. Be kind to your mind. Mental Wellness Fair, Saturday, April 20th from 2 to 5 p.m. on the church lot. We need you, we need you, we need you. So please come. Um, if you don't know, we have a uh, mental, men mental health wellness ministry that is going to be opening up over in the Lucille Manning Center. So praise God. God is continuing to do great things for Living Word Baptist Church. Um, so what else we need, sister? So let me just say this to you. Thank you. We just want to say thank you um, for giving my husband space to go through this process with his mom. Uh, probably as we speak, mom is transitioning 
to be with the Lord. And you know her song, When I See Jesus. When I See Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, it, it, yeah, we got tears because we're going to miss her. Yes. But God, but God. think but about God. all that she imparted yes. in us. Yes. And so continue to yes. just lift us up in prayer. Yes. And um, yes. thank you again for giving him that space. So yes. he don't have to be with the pastor's hat on. Mm -hmm. He's a son, y'all. Yes. He's a son. So Praise thank God. you for that. Praise and God. so um, before the music ministry comes, Cassandra, who's doing the special announcement today? Nobody today? All right. Well, y'all, we got a special announcement. And so um, we need to make sure that we continue to uplift our pastor and first lady um, because they have been there for us. And we need to make sure that we are there for them. And so we always have a, a celebration service coming up in September. So we want to mark your calendar because that's when we officially celebrate them. But we just ask that we just continue to pray and continue to cover them um, in this time um, and be ready to celebrate with them for 34 years of service here at Living Word Baptist Church. So um, mark your calendars. I think it's set first Sunday, no, second, second Sunday in September. So please make sure that we mark our calendars so we are here to support and be ready to celebrate. And then um, don't forget, we still need volunteers for our, um, they need ushers, greeters, child care assistants at our Southern Baptist Convention. It's going to be in Indy this year. And uh, you know our pastor has a, a big um, position in the Southern Baptist Convention. And so we want to show up and show out um, for Jesus, but also show up and show out for him as well. So uh, please mark your calendars and make sure you are in attendance June 9th through 12th, uh, 2024. Um, we need child care assistance, registration, prayer room. There's, there's a space for you to serve. Um, and so we are not saved to sit, we're saved to serve. So be ready to serve. And then as people are coming in, y'all scoot to the center, make some room. Yes, some room. yes, room. yes, yes. And let's go higher in the Lord. We are about to go higher as the music ministry makes their way up. Amen. So this is the song that we've been doing all all uh, month. Yes.
dance with me. Do your dance with me. Come on and do your dance with me. Do your dance with me. Come on, y'all, help me sing. Do your dance. the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Everybody pray. Praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. If y'all don't mind, help me say that. Praise the Lord with me. Come on, y'all. Praise the Lord with me. Everybody pray. Praise the Lord. The Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Everybody praise the Lord with me. Yeah. Praise the Lord with me. Yeah, no man help me say. While everybody's coming in, will all the able bodies please stand for the word of God coming from the New King James Version? I'll be coming from Joshua, Joshua, chapter 1. Starting at verse 1. Do everybody have it? And the word reads, After the death of Moses, the, son, the servant of of the Lord. It came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, 
my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Go over to this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am given to, you, to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot with tread, tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Ephrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. And I, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you, nor forsake you. Be strong, of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their father to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, and that you may observe to, to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you forever you go. Wherever you go. May God have a blessing to the reading of his magnificent and perfect word. Grab a hand of somebody. You never know what people are going through. Even though we celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Because he died for us and our sins. He didn't have to do it. He even said in the Garden of Gethsemane. If this cup pass. But let thy will not mine be done. So he did it for us y'all. He didn't have to, but he loved us that much that he took on the burden of sin on an old rugged cross for me and for you. Oh, Father God, as we come before the throne of grace, we just like to say thank you. Before we ask for anything, we just want to say thank you for everything, oh, Father God, because you've been too good to us, my Heavenly Father. Thank you, not just for touching us with your finger of love and giving us traveling grace this morning, my Heavenly Father, but just renewing our minds every single day and having an opportunity to serve you, oh, Father God, because you didn't have to do it, but you do it anyway. You love us unconditionally, so we pray for a spirit of repentance right now, my Heavenly Father. We've done anything or said anything or thought anything that wasn't your perfect will, my Heavenly Father, that you would forgive us right now, my Heavenly Father. We just say thank you for forgiveness, my Heavenly Father, because we know we ain't been perfect, we ain't been right, my Heavenly Father, but your grace has been sufficient, and you love us anyway, my Heavenly Father. I just want to say thank you for that, Lord. Continue to touch our pastor, First Lady, my Heavenly Father. We pray for Mother Manning right now. You know, she's touched everybody. And, and, and these prayers are going to be pacific, my Heavenly Father. So touch her in her transition because she's been a, a soldier on the battlefield for you, my Heavenly Father. Touch the Cunningham family and touch all those that are sick and bereaved right now, my Heavenly Father. 
touch those behind prison walls and those who are prison in their mind, my Heavenly Father. We just say, we pray that you would just touch them, my Heavenly Father. And we say right now in your word, your Lord, you say, trust in you, Lord. We trust you with everything that we have. Lean not unto our own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge you. And you shall direct our path. That has been our experience with you. So please direct our path, my Heavenly Father. Continue to give us strength because you already promised that you would never leave us nor forsake us. You already promised that you would give us perfect peace of our mind and state on you. Just so we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you for just being you, my Heavenly Father. Thank you for all you've done and what you continue to do, my Heavenly Father. Touch those in the nursing homes right now. And like I said, touch the, just the, the world, my Heavenly Father. We know we just, we in a whole, our, somebody just said our young people, my Heavenly Father. I was hearing on last night, my Heavenly Father, shooting downtown. Our young people, touch them in their minds right now, my Heavenly Father. Disciple them, my Heavenly Father. Give us the strength to be the Bible that they need to see, my Heavenly Father. We just say, and these trying times, because we already know that this is the end of times, you know, but men will be lovers of themselves, uh, and and will be rumors of wars, and, and just everything is just going crazy, my Heavenly Father. But only in you, my Heavenly Father. Thank you for a renewed mind. Thank you for a transformed mind, my Heavenly Father. I just want to say thank you for just being saved, my Heavenly Father. I don't know about anybody else, my Heavenly Father. That's my declaration to you. Thank you for being saved, my Heavenly Father. Renewed in my right mind, my Heavenly Father. Filled with the Holy Ghost, my Heavenly Father. It may not be a big thing to some people, but sometimes I just say thank you, Lord, just for you being you, my Heavenly Father. Thank you for being saved, my Heavenly Father. Thank you in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. As we move toward the toward the uh, offering, seems like we need a little more space. So the music ministry is going to come up here and take a seat. And then who's ever going to lead us in the offering? Amen. So somebody's leading us in giving. I mean, we know what to do. We know you can't be God's giving. No matter how Paul. it's offering time, y'all need to sound a little excited in the house of the Lord. Y'all need to sound a little excited. The Bible says in Luke 12 and 48, to whom I'm going to put a spin on this, to whom much is given, much is required. Okay, God then woke you up this morning and you can't give God your best. He's just asking for 10%. You can't give God what you have from your heart because he don't want no tip. He wants a tie. You know, we don't talk about that enough. And I know what Malachi says in 2 Corinthians, but to whom much is given, much is required. God has been too good to me to be sitting on my hands. You know, so we need to get excited as these uh, ushers come up and uh, get prepared for offering.
excellent. In Malachi 3, the Bible records that um, will a man rob God? Yes, he will rob him and tithe and offerings. Bring ye all the tithes to the storehouse so there be meat in my house. Please take this serious because this is an opportunity to give from your heart. I have a usher prayer. Lord, I thank you for this day. Thank you for the ones that gave, the ones that couldn't give. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey man, it's now time for the music ministry. Yeah, y'all can give us a hand. <laughs> Amen. And we are all the music ministries. So what we gonna do? Trying to gauge what they what they doing to make sure that whoever's bringing the word have adequate time. So we have two to three selections that we are gonna bring y'all away. So we are gonna get we gonna go from fast to slow. So first we are gonna raise y'all up, and then by the time that the message comes, we are gonna have y'all where y'all can, you know, be ready to receive the word. So this first one that we've done, that we're gonna do, is one that y'all should be familiar with. And we have a guest director who's gonna take us, uh, lead us in this song. Y'all give Sister Rhonda a hand as she comes up. Can everybody see the director? All right, we good. All right.
Now, something, when you, something about when you have somebody out front that just brings it all together. Unless you get the message. So what we want y'all to know is that there is no greater love. Oh, 
Lord, there's love, there's love. Could nobody do it but Jesus. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head for you and me to die. That's love. That's love. That's love. That's love. But that's not how the story is. Three days later, he rose again. That's love. That's love. Oh God, I thank you for your love. That's not how. That's not how the story is. Three days later, he rose again. That's love. That's love. That's love. That's love. Oh, what a wonderful love. Oh, what a complete love. What a powerful love. Watch me. What a love he had for you and me. What a love. What a sweet love. What a powerful and complete love. What a love for you and me. What a love Jesus has for you and me. That's love. That's love. That's love, oh God, that's your love. That's your love, Jesus. That's your love, Jesus. That's a powerful, sweet, and committed love. That's a complete and whole kind of love. That's a love that'll lift you out of despair. That's love. God, thou hast been our dwelling place. You've been our lying down and our getting up. You've been an awe and awesome. God. This morning I stand not under my power, but I'm leaning and dependent on thee. I hear you say in your word, Call on the name of the Lord. I hear you say that you would bear the infirmities of the weak. 
touch us right now, O oh God. Give us preaching power. That we might declare your truth. Lord, we lean and depend on you. We pray now for continued rest and reward for Mama. And we know that you are a God that keeps us. Now we stand at this sacred desk to declare your word. Give us preaching power. Let the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart, be acceptable, O oh God, my strength, my redeemer. And we'll be careful to give you praise and glory. Now, Father God, if I stand behind this sacred desk with fear in my heart, I pray that you give me courage. Courage to declare an uncompromising word. But Father God, if I stand behind this desk in arrogance, remind me that I am nothing without thee. All that I've ever been, it's because of thee. All that I am, it's because of thee. All that I will ever be, it is because of thee. So this morning, O oh gracious Father, take my heart and feel with it. Take my mind and think with it. Take my tongue and speak with it that I might declare that you got up on this morning. And because you got up, we can re worship a risen Savior. Because you got up, we can declare victory in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank God afresh for you as a family. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your concern. Thank you for your love that you have shown uh, to us. I want to uh, thank those of you that came out on Friday. Um, I did my heart uh, well. You know, people don't always demonstrate uh, their love, but when they do that, we ought to appreciate it. And I want you to know that I appreciate all that you have done, all that you are doing, and how God is moving. One of the challenges that many people across uh, country as we have shared uh, the transition uh, time of my mother people have uh, acknowledged and also given me encouragement and uh, great words of comfort one of the challenges and one of the things that might be in the minds of men how can he stand behind uh, that desk while his mother lays on her deathbed? When my mother birthed me, she gave me to God. My grandmother came to Chicago after I was born. My mother had to drop out of school. She 
She said, I'm going to take him back with me. And my mother said, no. I'm going to raise him myself. She stayed with me. Y'all know I'm a mama's boy. When I got up, I stayed with her. But this morning, I stand behind this sacred desk to declare the word of God, to let you know he got up. And for that reason, we need to trust him. For that reason, we need to praise him. You see, I don't preach for a living, but I live to preach. It is the essence of who and what I am. This morning, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to walk through Luke 24. This day that will live throughout the annals of time. What better day for us to commit a new beginning than today? I stand here before you to encourage you, to empower you, and to challenge you to not hide behind your fears that life might bring you, but stand on the boldness and the promise God has said he will never leave you nor forsake you. Luke 24. You don't have to stand to read because I'm going to do the whole chapter. Now upon the first day of the week very early in the morning they came unto the sepulchre bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them they had found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid, bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seeketh ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. I want to stop and start right here. On Friday... Several of you came with me to 
Christ missionary. I use uh, an acronym for my subject. I want to finish that today. I see. You see. A. T. T. I see. You see. A. T. T. In control. Under control. All. The. Time. That's the God. That we serve. That's the God that I want to introduce you to. This morning. Life might be falling apart. In your estimation. All around you. But there is a God. If you don't know him. I've stopped by to introduce you to him. They accused him of blasphemy. And they moved and ran him from judgment hall to judgment hall. The challenge was that nothing that they could say or do could prove that he was not worthy of his honor. But the key that they did not understand was that he came for each one of us. And many of us uh, have lost control because we have forgotten the scripture where Isaiah says they that keep their mind stay on Jesus he will keep you in perfect peace that's why I can stand before you this morning my mother racked with pain fighting for the very essence of who she is you see when when you die in Christ you don't have to fight for your life when you Die in Christ. You just have to stand up. And that's where we find the opening of our text today. Mary and the girls got together. They pulled together some spices and some fresh cologne. Because they had buried Jesus in such a hurry that they did not follow the customs and anoint him with oils and perfume. You see, uh, when uh, you're at that stage of living where life is trickling out of your body, the odor of death slips in. And so it was their custom to anoint with spices and oils that the odor of death would not overtake you. You see, the thing that you need to be mindful of is that when we are leaving here, the odor 
of our rebellion from God is upon us. Sisters came. Uh, they had to prepare the oils. They had to prepare uh, the spices. The question uh, for each one of us this morning is are we prepared? You see, every day you live is a day of preparation for where you are about to transition to. And see, the awesomeness of this is to understand that he got up. In this text, we see three things. We see one, Jesus overcame the devil and he rescued each one of us. We see that Jesus overcame the world and we are blessed because of it. Finally, Jesus overcame flesh and he gave us a spirit of belief can I walk through this a minute oftentimes we uh, are distracted in life uh, because of the challenges that we face Mary and the girls uh, were wailing and I can imagine them uh, really feeling as though they had failed because they had not gotten there and anointed him. They were trying to make up uh, for lost time. When they got to the tomb, they began to talk this thing. Who will roll the stone away? Last week, Andre talked about uh, if we don't cry out, the stones, the rocks will cry out. Now, I thought about that when he made that statement on last week, and I, I just thought that listen uh, why would a rock y'all want to do this uh, cry out but when we hear Jesus teaching on his way to Calvary we hear him sitting in the church house and telling them that the chief cornerstone that you had thrown away has become the anchor of the building. Songwriter says, uh, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. The challenge for us today is to look in the mirror and ask ourselves a question. Have you forgotten that he got up? The old hymn, the old Service, they used to say, Remember me. Remember me.
You see, God never forgot us. But we forgot him. We've let distractions, we've let life get in between what he wants to do for us. And so the thing that we need to be mindful of as the women go to the tomb. They are talking about who will move or who will roll the stone away. And so I can imagine the devil getting into the conversation because now we see that the women were talking about the things or they were looking at the things that they didn't think that they were able to do. Why is it that we tend to focus more on what we don't have or what we cannot do? That it stifles us from being able to stand when God tells us that he would never leave us nor forsake us. And we're still worried about what somebody else is going to do to us. Remember, he got up. The thing that you need to understand is that the devil might hold you for a minute. But God keeps you from eternity. And the Bible says that even though trouble may come, it will not come nigh under me. Ten thousand might fall at my right hand, but it can't get to me. You know why? Because I'm in the hand of God. And the Bible says that no man can pluck me out. He got up. And I stopped by to remind you. One of the challenges that we have here is that the scripture teaches us in this text that Jesus overcame the devil. The only tool that he has against you is that he places the fear of death in you. And when Jesus died on Calvary and they buried him in a borrowed tomb, darkness fell on the face of the earth and the sun, S-U-N, refused to shine. But the sun, the S-O-N, started shining brighter than ever before. And the Bible says, early on Sunday morning. Now it's significant to know that he got up on the first day of the week. But the Sabbath was on the last day. Of the week. You rest. From your labor. On your last day. But you celebrate. Your life. On the first day. Because that's when. He got up. Have you forgotten. That he got up. Can I walk on. Jesus overcame the world. Look at the text. He says, verse 13, And behold, two of them went the same day to the village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together all of these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. 
but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as you walk and are saved? Listen, these two brothers were focused on the happenings in the world. They had lost their focus on the calling of Christ in their life. Oftentimes, the weight of the world and the struggles that we face take our eyes and our hearts off of what Christ is doing and has done in us. We are on our way somewhere, but many of us don't know where because there's a question that the world has placed in our spirits. We don't understand what is going on because we're caught up in what the world says. The challenge for us is that we have forgotten that when Christ died on Calvary's tree, he defeated the world. We are not to bring the world into his house. We're to take his house into the world. Too many of us are waiting on for Sunday to worship God. You can't wait until you get here on Sunday. You ought to be worshiping on your way here. That God might meet you here. These brothers on their way to Emmaus, 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 and they were talking about the news of the day. CNN had reported that they hung him on Calvary's tree. Fox News had demonized him. Headline news didn't know what to say. CBS just all together got it mixed up. NBC didn't know what was going on. But yet they sensationalized his death. But they forgot his promise. These brothers have been listening to the news. And the scripture says that they were holding, were holding. In other words, their eyes and their understanding were limited to what they could see. The world has placed us in bondage. Sam said it this morning, what is the bondage that you held in? Is it a spiritual bondage? Is it a physical bondage? Or it is, is it an earthly bondage? You see, you don't have to be locked up to be bound up. And as long as you're bound up, you can't worship. These brothers could not worship. They didn't even know that Jesus was in the midst. Then, you want, you want to do this? We said, listen, he slips up on them. It's right here in the text. And he's listening to their conversation. Don't you know Jesus is listening? To your foolish conversations. To your wise conversations. And he's able to get into your conversation. The text says here that they kept on walking and he asked them about their communication. You see, the challenge for us is that we will talk about one another. But we won't talk 
to one another. Nor will we talk with one another. You see, you can talk to somebody and offend them. But when you talk with someone, you gain understanding. You see, most of us are familiar with talking about somebody. Old school, uh, take us back. Uh, Cynthia, I'm playing the dozens. Going back, uh, your mama is black as a skillet. I'm going... And she can fry bacon without fire. I'm playing the dozens. Folk will ride right with you. And they will think your mama is. Black, hot, and ugly. But how can we, and when do we, see someone with a bow down here? Just say, listen, I just want to encourage you. I don't know what you're going through. But I'm willing to walk with you through it. That's what Jesus gave us on the cross. That's how he defeated the world. He gave us a blessing. Look at your neighbor. Say, you are a blessing. Act like it. Some of you ask the question, uh, what does a blessing act like, Kay? Can I, can I help you? A blessing will be accused of whatever it is that's lied on him. And never say a mumbling word. A blessing will be stood before the rulers and declare not a word. A blessing will be insulted on a regular basis, will be spat on, will be beaten, will be scourged, and never say a mumbling word a blessing will be hung on an old rugged tree and a blessing will cry out unto the God that he serves father forgive them for they know not what they do. A blessing. Will hang. On an old tree. And reminisce. Where he has come from. And understand. That he is. Alone. But call out. Why have you forsaken me? But in his calling and in his cry, he does not turn bitter. Because his cry feels a need to know the promise that his father says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. A blessing 
is faithful to the task that is started within him or her and is faithful to complete it in the time Jesus Christ he says to us on the cross he's talking to his father it is finished you see he couldn't get up if he never laid down most of us are praying for an easy life but the rougher it is for you the stronger you become because the more if you know Jesus you learn to lean and depend on him it's not about me it's not about what I'm going through it's about who's with me as I go through it I just stopped by to remind you that he got up last in this text it teaches us that Jesus overcame flesh that we might believe look at the text he says Thirty-six, And as Jesus, as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. The old preacher used to say, uh, he just appeared in the room. And stood in the midst of them and said unto them, peace be unto you. Now, why would he have to say peace be unto you? Because the text goes on to tell us that they believed him to be a spirit, a ghost. But he himself tells them that I am flesh. Listen, but they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. He said unto them, why are you troubled? Why do your thoughts arise in your heart? Behold my hands, my feet, that it is I myself. And then look at this. He says, handle me and see. Why is it that we always have to be proven to them? It's because our belief has suffered great damage. We no longer trust ourselves or anyone else. Let me walk on this and then I'm going home. Jesus starts his ministry at the age of 33. He begins by collecting 12 knuckleheads. He talks to them on a regular basis and he shares with them. And he immediately begins to tell them what his purpose, his strategy, and his mission is. He gives them clear understanding and, excuse me, plain talk, not understanding, plain talk on three separate occasions. On every occasion, they nod their heads. Yes, we understand. Yes, we understand. And when it comes to the final explanation, he's meeting with Peter and the boys. And he says to them, he says, listen, I'm, I'm about to check out, brothers. And he says, now, y'all need to understand that it's going to be uh, rough when I step out Peter like many of us a little bit uh, zealous he says uh, you got to stop talking like that 
I'll die for you. And he was the first one to slip. Undercover. Because the Bible says that when they took Jesus. And Peter had cut off the soldier's ear. And Jesus, a blessing, took the ear and put it back. And he turned to Peter. He says, he that lives by the sword will die by the sword. What are you saying? You got to check your emotions. You've got to check your anger. You've got to check your life. Because you can't be in control. Nor under control. When your emotions are the control. It's got to be. It has to be. Jesus. And the only way that he can have control is that you've got to believe that he got up. Why is it so important that he got up? Because if our deliverance was in his death then that would mean we ourselves come to a conclusion but the Bible says that he defeated death and the challenge for us is to understand and the proof in the pudding is that he got up. So as I take leave of you I leave you with this. No matter what you are going through the resurrection of Jesus Christ proves to us that we are victorious. They that die in the Lord will get up. They that are called of God they get up why are you sitting on your butt everybody get up I don't mean that rhetorically I mean that literally get up Some of you are struggling. And I don't want to be disrespectful. But even if you have trouble struggling getting up, I need you to get up. I need you to lean on the chair in front of you, the chair beside you, or the person next to you I want to thank you for getting up I want to remind you that just the obedience of getting up God will change your walk He'll change your mind because it's the will 
and the obedience in us to God that makes the difference. Listen, I'm going to leave you with this. I see, you see, A, T, T. Repeat that with me. I see, you see, A, T, T. I serve a God that's in control. I serve a God. That's under control. All the time. And because I serve him. He has enabled me. To be in control. To be under control. All the time. Even when I lose control. Because of him, him, I'm in control. control. Because the Bible says, says, he will never leave me, me, nor forsake me. me. And I believe it. it. That's it. it. You might be seated. Doors of the church are open. What better day to give our life to Christ than a resurrection? It's a new beginning. It is a deposit in us, a blessing that God has made to be a blessing to others. Will there be one? Will there be one? Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? Did I I make sense today? So when we look at Uh, where we are and we think about what Christ has done on our behalf we are quick to pay homage uh, to people that buys us a Christmas gift and the Christmas gift that they bought us really wasn't what we needed or wanted but Christ in his word says I will supply all your needs in glory and then he shares with us if you belong to him he'll give you the desires of your heart but at the same time he wants to temper your desires as to what he's deposited in you. I think the challenge for us is that we uh, we come in and uh, we're heavy. But the scripture teaches us he says bring your burdens unto me and I will give you rest songwriter said it like this take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there we may not have made it plain enough for you we may not have shared with you that it's not really what you can do but it's what he's already done for you He's taken the weight and the guilt. He's taken the shame off of us. Put it on himself. 
that he would erase any excuse not to trust him. The Bible says that tomorrow is not promised. So the question is, what will you do with today? I ain't finished, y'all. But I am going to stop. And we usually have the practice uh, here is sermonic discussion. If there was something in the message or something that is on your heart this morning that you may not understand or you are not clear on, we need for you to leave here clear. Amen. Proverbs says to us, Above all things, get an understanding. Solomon goes on to say, and with understanding, get wisdom. You cannot apply or you cannot practice the word of God if you don't understand what's required of you. And so we take time to answer those questions for you. And this is the time that we want to do that. I know uh, everybody is, uh, has something on their minds and something to do, but it doesn't change your life until you open your mouth and ask. Uh, I was talking to uh, Vanessa the other morning she says to me, close mouths, don't get fed. Don't get fed. Pastor, I got a question. Talk to me. Um, we celebrate Christmas on the 25th of December every mm. year. Why does resurrection move? Excellent question. Resurrection or as the... Um, um, the uh, worldly people say um, the Easter or uh, celebration of resurrection is uh, 40 days after the first new moon so it's according to the movement of nature because God had ordained the time and so it moves because the time does not come in the same time at every year. That's one reason. There are several other reasons, but that's the main reason. Good question. Good question. Yes, ma'am. Wait a minute. She wants to give want everybody to hear you. Yes, ma'am. Pastor, you said that um, Jesus told the 12 knuckleheads. <laughs> Um, on three occasions, uh -huh. plain talk about his purpose. Yes. Could you give me those Bible verses if you know them offhand? I don't know them offhand, but okay. I do know them. I'll, I'll get them to you. Okay. But uh, he, he shared with them uh, at the outset of his, of his ministry in Matthew. Uh, he shared with them in John, the last, uh, the last one. And uh, it's, in, it's recorded in Luke as well. Okay. I'll get that for you. I'll give it to Kay. Or connect. Okay. All right. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. Amen. I want to thank you again for. Yes, ma'am. No, you don't be sorry. Listen, never apologize. To end. Um, it was such a blessing the way you broke down how. Um, right after you said, look at your neighbor and tell them you're a blessing and then tell them to act like one. Mm -hmm. And you, and she has definitely been a blessing to me. Who's she? Miss K, as, as you call her. Um, she's been a mom, a sister, and a friend to me. Amen, amen. 
And um, so you had um, kind of like walked through how Jesus has been a blessing. Yes. Is that recorded anywhere? That's, the, this, that's in the passage of scripture. That's Mark, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Okay. But that, it's not recorded in terms of a blessing. It's a, recorded in his purpose. No, I, I mean the way that you said it. The way, no. The way that you. It's not recorded. Okay. Uh, right. it's, it's, on, it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> it's, on, it's on YouTube. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was, that was Fletcherized. I, th I thank you for that. I'm, and then I, I must say um, this morning, um, our theme for this year is to help us to understand how to move from religion to relationship. Religion has never opened the heart of God. Religion has never received the blessings of God it's only when you pursue a relationship that you receive the blessings of God can, can I take a minute because when we think about uh, creation God did not create us because he needed us God did not create us because he was lonely God created us because he loved us. How do you know that, Fletcher? Well, I'm glad you asked. The Bible says he took the dust and he formed it. He molded it and shaped it into a man. But then he took himself and he blew into him. He deposited the pneuma, the ruah, spirit of God. That's when man became a living soul. And if you don't have Christ in your life, some of you watched the Green Mile. Dead man walking. You need to understand the reason you struggle is because you're doing it in your own might. You see, it wasn't until God deposited himself into Adam that Adam was even given life. And then guess what? After he gave him life, he gave him responsibility. He gave him accountability. It's time out for us just coming to church and just play in church God is holding us accountable and the Bible says that we must be a light to this dark world that light is not here on Easter Sunday morning on Christmas morning on Mother's Day that light walks with us each and every day with new mercies with new mercies amen so um, the key for us you got a question come on man the key for us is to understand that our relationship with God necessitates that we have a relationship with each other yes sir so, with that being said, when you said God created us, and he blew life in us, I think in Genesis 6-6, six, six, why did he repent on his creation there? Oh, man. Well, now you, he was not happy. Listen, we go to, we go to uh, Genesis 6, it was right, right before God destroyed the earth. And what he had done, what he was saying was that because of man's rebellion and he had gotten progressively worse it shares with us that God had placed so much love in us that he was disappointed in what we had become 
And I think one of the challenges for us is that most of us, when we look at God, we look at God as this uh, uh, omnipotent, this all-powerful being that he can control anything. But his, de- that's what he described, uh, that's what he is. That's what he is. But the reason we're looking at a relationship with him and the reason he wants a relationship with us is because he's asking us, it's our free will. It is our choice to want to be in relationship with him. Here, when the, the world at that particular time, he only found one family that was even close to faithful to him. He had given everybody else time after time. Noah preached 150 years the same sermon. Repent and believe. And they never heard it. Never accepted it. And so the consequences is destruction. Because it wasn't something that God did to them. It was what they had done to themselves. Because they rejected him. But at the same time, you know, that, that's, that's the awesomeness of understanding what free will is all about. You can sit there all you want, hear the word of God, logically deduce and put it together, and then still you have the choice to receive or accept it or reject it. And no action is action because you're rejecting when you don't choose. No, 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 no. You have to understand repentance. You have to understand repentance. That, correct? We reject what you... So, but he rejected the sin that the men had practiced or was practicing. See, one of the challenges that we need to be able to understand, when, Paul, when, when God actually administers his wrath, he's not administering his wrath on people. He's administering his wrath on the sin that is in people. You see, what we have done is that we have rationalized in our limited minds how right and wrong looks to God. You see, but God has made it plain in his word. Just trust in me. You see, and the thing that you have to be mindful of is that What he's asking us for is, first and foremost, obedience. It's not about, that's what relationship is about. You see, and relationship uh, takes work. Relationship just doesn't happen. And most of us, because I'm married, I'm supposed to get the benefits of being married. No, I'm married, it moves me to a different place of responsibility. And I have to be accountable in my relationship. I got to carry my weight. Listen, when we get married, and, and same thing with, with, uh, with God. In our relationship with God, God gives us 100% of him. Why do we only give him 10% of us? Worship is two hours on a Sunday morning. We got 166 hours that we do whatever we want to do. But God has given us everything in him. You know why a lot of marriages fall apart? Because we bring in this partnership thing. We don't understand that marriage is a covenant relationship. The relationship that we bring to God is a covenant relationship. He models the marriage after his relationship with us. He brings all of him to us. And he, the Bible says he blew into man his breath, his spirit, his totality. And then man became a living soul. Now, the disappointment, you see, most of us don't understand that uh, we, can just, we can hurt God by rejecting him. And it doesn't mean that Physically, we hurt God. 
But at the same time, he has poured out his love. Have you ever loved somebody that you uh, gave them and gave them and they took all that you gave them and just uh, took it for granted? I must, I must have hit a nerve. Okay, okay. But at the same time, uh, the thing that we have to be mindful of, it didn't negate the love. But it hurt you for extending the love. You see? And I think the thing that we need to be mindful of, God does, never stops loving us. No matter how far we get away from him. You know? The Bible says, and God is married to the backslider. He used a whole book, the book of Hosea, to demonstrate his love for us. When he sent Hosea to marry a, a night walker. Goma was a prostitute. And he says, love Goma as I love the children. In spite of what she did, in spite of how she was, he loved her. And it was a picture of God loving us. You see, so that, that repentance is a demonstration of his love for us. Amen. Amen. Pastor, what's the definition of covenant? The definition of covenant? Yes. Uh, a covenant is a, um, it is a, thank you. It is a promise. Uh, it, it is not uh, based on anything outside. It is a promise that comes from within. Amen. Thank you. Is Sam, is he asking a question or is he? Yeah, he okay. just explained his question to me. Come on. How God died, he went to hell on the cross. Okay. Um, one of the things that we need to be mindful of is that um, when Christ or God died on the cross, it was uh, for all of our sins. And when we talk about in the scripture, in Ephesians 3, I'm just, we, we say that he went to hell. But really what he did, he went into the, under, the underworld, which, is, which was housed. In, and when we look at, when we look at uh, Bible um, structure, uh, there is a place uh, for the fallen angels, we call Tarsus. There's a place for the saints of God they're waiting for the return of God then there's a, a place for the lost or the, the people that are in torment and one, one of the things we have to be mindful of when God when Jesus died on the cross he went into the underworld those that were there and believers he took paradise and remember when he says to the, uh, uh, the thief on the cross today thou shalt be with me in paradise he took paradise from beneath the underworld and lifted it up okay and one of the things is we have to be mindful of that's why I share with people um, I'm not so keen on going to heaven the promise that Christ made to us is that we would be with him because the Bible teaches us in revelations that there be a new heaven and a new earth I don't want to go someplace that they have to renovate. And see, I'm not teaching against heaven. I'm teaching scripture. Okay, so when we start thinking about, you know, we don't have enough uh, uh, time to, that's why it's important for us to ask these questions. Because a lot of us, have heard something that has not been totally scripture. Amen. Amen. 
Great questions, great questions. We thank God afresh for each and every one of you, and I pray God's blessings. Listen, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, tell somebody about it. What we're trying to do is not just do church in this building, but we want to be a light in this community. We want people to know that Christ has called us to be more than just a uh, country club. And so with that being said, uh, I need some workers. I need some soldiers. Because we're in a war. And I need some people that are bold enough to stand up and say, hey, I'm ready to fight. And you got to be prepared. We got to be prepared to fight. Amen. Amen. Let me let you go because I need to get back. Uh, oh God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for these that have come. We pray, oh God, that you would cover them, strengthen them, empower them. And Father God, I pray now that we might remove fear. For you share with us that perfect love cast out all fear. The fear of asking the questions that I need asked. The fear of what somebody might think of me. The fear of not knowing. I pray, O oh God, that you will strengthen us as we leave from this place. That you might be glorified and magnified in all that we say, think, and do. We're reminded in Ephesians 3 where it says to us that you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or imagine. And for that, we're trusting you. We believe you, God, for your word is true. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but you will remain forever. With this prayer, O oh God, we say thank you. And all that agree said amen. 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 We thank everybody for joining us for Resurrection Sunday. We're going to ask, uh, you know, normally pastor would be up here to hug everybody, but he needs to get back to his mother. Amen. And so uh, remember to pray for Pastor Mother Manning, First Lady, the Fletcher family. Uh, and we want you to hug and pray for everybody in here. So don't leave here without hugging somebody and telling them that you love them. Amen. Uh, we love you. We love you. We love you. Love you. We love you. Amen.